video. We're installing suspension. What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. This video is gonna be sponsored by Hardcore Cycles. Be sure and check them out on Instagram as well as Facebook. And be sure to check out their site at hardcorecyclesinc.com where they are your go-to spot for any of your motorcycle needs. They have parts to include but not limited to. Sportsters, baggers, you have your older soft tails, newer soft tails. They even have parts for your Indian FTR 1200. So if you are an Indian out there, check them out. With that being said, if you go to their site, you don't see something that you are looking for, shoot them a message on Instagram. Let them know what you're looking for that you weren't able to see it on their site and if they can order it for you. Chances are that they will be able to. Again, huge shout out to Hardcore Cycles for jumping on board and sponsoring this video. Today's video, we're gonna be swapping out our OEM shock on our 2019 FXLR Lowrider. For this install, you are gonna be needing a small variation of tools, most of them being different socket ends to include a ball Allen socket, which is gonna come once you have to secure the compressor to the rear of your transmission because it's a little bit of an angle and it's gonna make it a lot easier that way you're not really fighting it. And some of the other tools that you are gonna be needing that isn't mandatory, but it will make this job a little bit easier. It's gonna be a motorcycle lift paired with a scissor jack. If you do not have any of these options, check out at least a scissor jack. You could even do your Harbor Freight motorcycle jack or a car jack that you're gonna position it near the rear tire. It'll help keep the bike where it's at and keep it from volume. You could also utilize a set of two by fours. You're gonna want it a little bit longer than this so that way it goes across the frame and then just stack them. You can get one long one from your local hardware store and then just cut it to size and that will also get the job. It'll keep the bike level as where it's at. The height of this shock is gonna be close to stock that right now we're running a bunking shock extension on the motorcycle, so we're at about 13.25. It says it's a two inch lift, but I didn't see that much of a difference, and this is gonna be around 12 and a half inches for your height. The cool thing about this shock is that you have adjustability, and it's numbered one through six to help you figure out your setting at a number level, and it has a notch on the top of the eyelet here. You can set it to where you like it. You can have it stiffer or a lot softer of a rebound. And then in your box, it includes all the tools that you're gonna be needing. This is gonna go on to our hand control housing. You have your air hose. This is gonna be what you're gonna do near the end. And then you have all the wiring that's gonna plug into your battery, your CAN bus, as well as your compressor here. This is gonna go onto the back of the transmission. And they even include this hose cutter. So you're gonna run this hose from the compressor to the shock. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that there is a healthy amount of slack in the hose. Whenever you extend it or compress it, there's no pinching, which we'll address it once we get to that point. So the first thing that we're gonna do is remove our seat, and now we can have access to everything that's here. You're gonna to wanna to remove the front half of your clamp, and just set that aside. And you'll replace it with the one provided from Legends with your air shock. You don't want to over tighten this, it's just snug. The cleanest way to do this install, you could run this inside your bars internally, but we're not going to be doing that. What we're going to do is just zip tie along our T-bars. It may look a little sloppy, but we also have the fairing to hide it. That's another reason why you want to get a fairing. And then we're just going to run it underneath, and what we're going to do is lift up the tank from the rear and slide it all the way underneath, so that way we can plug this into our compressor. The next step is gonna go ahead and remove the hardware from the lower end of your gas tank. And then you're gonna to wanna to loosen the one that's up on top. That's gonna to allow you the ability to lift up your tank and then run this along the frame and out by your seat. We're just gonna secure it, run it along and then secure it with zip ties. But before we do that, for us, we have to go ahead and access the dash. And what we're gonna do is just unplug our two wheel audio harness so that we can remove it. So here is our audio harness. Remove that, just gonna tuck that back in. So we're just gonna unthread that so that way it's not obstructing. So we're just gonna go ahead and lift it, place something there to hold the gas tank up. Once you've ran it along your frame, we already have a zip tie here that we're using to secure other items on our bike. We're just gonna feed that through. And it's gonna help secure it a little bit better. This project can seem a little daunting, mostly just because of the air hose. I believe a lot of people think it's a lot more complicated than it is. The hardest part may just be lifting up your tank and routing it along the frame. It may just be one of those things that seem like it's a lot more intense than it really is. And then it's attaching the compressor 
to the back of your bike. It may add that feeling that it's a lot more complicated than it really is, but if you break it down, essentially you're just putting on the clamp onto your left hand control. That's gonna be up and down for the shock, and then you run it underneath the tank, and then you're gonna just attach the compressor to the rear of your motorcycle. Now, one of the things that you do wanna do is gonna go ahead and remove your main fuse from the opposing side of your battery box, and that's gonna help prevent any shorts if you were to accidentally ground something out. That may be another portion where if you've never done anything like this to your motorcycle, it may add to that complicated factor. We're gonna go ahead and continue moving on and attach the compressor. The following step is gonna go and remove this plate that sits on top of your mono shock. And go ahead and use a 7 16 socket. And then this small Torx bolt is gonna be a T27. It's the same one that you use for your hand control clamp. So that comes out. If you're having issues with your shot coming out, just double check that the bearing on the inside, this portion, isn't sticking out. We were having a slight issue with it because this portion had slid out like that and it was stuck on the outside portion of where this mounts. So we simply pushed it back in and it came out with very little issue after that. And now seeing where these mount is gonna be a little difficult, you have these two holes up here on the back of your transmission. We're gonna do and you can kind of see it. I'm looking through between my belt guard and my belt. And it's just a matter of feel at this point. When it comes to this portion, try to secure the compressor onto the back of your transmission was to first thread it to the back of the transmission with a shorter 532nd Allen sockets. That way you can get in there, turn it by hand, and that way you get the screws in there and set. The next easiest way to do it is gonna be with a ball Allen. And on the one on the clutch side, come at it from the brake side so that way you can come in at this angle, get it and tighten it. And if you can't get a good purchase on it, what you'll do is you can tr use um, a smaller wrench or just a crescent. It's a weird angle, but we were able to secure it and hold it and then tighten it to that point. And on this, and as for the brake side screw, we just attacked it from this side as well. We got it and then we used our crescent to get a good purchase onto the Allen bit and then we turned it by hand. It's a little frustrating, but just stay patient, get with it and get a good purchase on those screws so that way you don't strip them. Again, a ball Allen went a long way on this one. Now before moving on to the next step, what we're gonna do is to pull our main fuse. So there's your cover. And then this orange one that says 40 is gonna be your 40 amp main fuse. Unplug that and now your bike is good. You won't be able to blow this fuse. And then proceed to remove this battery cover. And then you're gonna have to remove your negative cable in order to remove your battery box. So there is our battery cable screw. Remove those wires out of the way. And then you're just gonna grab your plugs that come with your shock. So you have your positive, negative, you have this other connection that goes to your compressor, you have your relay, and then this is also gonna go to the compressor on this end. We plugged in our positive cable. Here we have plugs that are gonna go into our compressor. What we're gonna do is run it along the side of the battery and then just follow the rear brake line and we're running it underneath the frame. And we're gonna zip tie any of the slack that we may have just to clean up the wiring. And in order to plug in the negative cable, you're gonna have to reattach your battery cover. 
Now comes the moment we've been waiting for. After we've done all that work with the compressor, we've run the controls on our handlebars running along the frame, and then putting our compressor to the back of our transmission and the cables, plug into the compressor as well as to our battery, you're gonna be installing your mono shock. With your mono shock come several spacers. We have quarter inch, half inch, as well as a 5 8 And in the instructions, it lists out here where there's a diagram of their shock and it shows you which side the spacers go on first. But unfortunately, you're not able to put the spacers on and put the shock in because they're gonna fall out. So you have to do one half before you do the other. So we're gonna start off with the top. The clutch side is gonna be a quarter inch spacer which sits inside on the brake side. It's gonna be a half inch spacer. So we're gonna go ahead and feed that in. And then for the rear, it's gonna be a half inch spacer on the clutch side with a 5 8 spacer on the brake side. It's gonna be the same process. Now the shock may require some convincing to go inside. There's just a couple taps and then it seats. Now you're gonna to wanna to torque the bottom one first followed by the top. So that's gonna be 70 and 75 foot pounds, and then we're gonna do the top, followed by tightening down the pinch bolt for the lower shock bolt, and that's gonna be approximately 10 to 15 foot pounds for torque. So we still have some of our excess cable here. You have some green, red, and yellow wiring, same as the one that goes for the hand controls up top. And what you can do is just run and plug these together and then just address the excess wiring. So next you're just gonna wanna grab your hose and plug it into this hose socket. So now it's secured, you can pull it, and then you're gonna wanna guide it up through the frame. And the one thing that you don't want is for it to be getting caught in your chain or your belt. So when you route it, you can zip tie it at some points to keep it from ever making contact with those areas. And then it's just a matter of running your air hose in a most optimum area. And you wanna give yourself plenty of room so nothing's really ever too tight. So that's where we wanna run it. We pretty much, I'll show y'all here in a bit, but we ran it from the compressor and there's this little area with the fender. It's a fender protector, I think. It's plastic and I'm running underneath that. And I think that should help protect it and then just trying to figure out exactly where we want to run this. And so what I'm gonna do is zip tie it to an existing cable because I'm trying to keep it away from my belt, which is about to be chained soon. And again, you wanna make sure you have enough slack so it's not too taut anywhere. And so I'm checking it constantly. That looks like it's got good slot. So here is where our shock is. We have the valve here. You wanna make sure it's facing down. That way it's just the easiest way to get to it. So we have all this extra cable, a whole bunch of extra, but what we're gonna do is feed it to it. That's how much it would be. We're gonna add maybe a little bit of slack. I think there is ideal. We're gonna add a little bit more. So now it comes time to cut it, cut. Now we're snipped and then we're just gonna add this to our shock. Feed that in there. Now it's secured. We have this little loop here, plenty of room. And then we're gonna turn on the bike so that we can see if there's any, any bunching of cables. So it's fully extended. And now we're just gonna go ahead and drop it. That is dope. So all the air has been let out. Now we're just looking, this is the line for the hand control. It doesn't look like there's any bunching. The cables look good. We're gonna go ahead and give you all a close up here in a minute. But the only thing with this is that it's gonna sit on top of the plate and then we'll zip tie that so that way it doesn't find its way down. So fill it back up. I'm checking all the lines. That's good, there's no not gonna catch anywhere. Just double checking the feed so that way it's not near the belt, okay.
looks to be the top height. So everything looks good, the hosing looks good. We have ample room on this side so that way it doesn't bunch up or pinch or when we extend it, it's not getting too taut. It's got enough room so we're gonna go ahead and seal everything back up and get to it. So here's the shock fully inflated. Here is the hand control that runs up underneath the tank and we've zip tied it down here and then we ran it underneath the frame to come through this little hole and everything gets plugged into the battery. Here's the excess wiring. This is your inline fuse. It has your compressor connector that connects to this. And then it also has your positive negative. That's how it sits inside. And as for the hose, the component, the hose runs up underneath. And it's hard to see, but here it goes underneath the fender. There's a little plastic part right here. And then we run it up underneath away from the belt. And then it's right here. Here you can see part of it here where my finger is. And then we've zip tied it. It's gonna be difficult to see. And then there is the hose. Again, it's difficult to see, but we zip tied it to another existing cable and ran it underneath. There it is right there, underneath that finisher bolt. Along, up until, the fitting for the shock.